I'm Simon Chen. Um, I was the um, former um, British Consulate Trade Investment Officer from 2017 to 2019. I was detained by the Chinese authorities for 15 days, and it was happened and, um, from 8 August to 24 August for around 15 days. So I born and raised Hong Kongers, and I also quite vocal for a liberal democracy movement in Hong Kong, and um, that is part of the reason I was detained. So when I was in the West Kowloon High Speed train station, I had been stopped by the border force. Um, first of all, they had no idea why I had been stopped it and they said that the big, they, they received the order and instruction from the senior officials. I've been stopped it and I've been detained it within the uh, mainland Chinese police station in Hong Kong West Kowloon station for a while and then they, they um, um, order me to talk me on the high speed train back to Shenzhen. So, so so since 8 August, I've been detained. In that interrogation room, you can see that they have a steel cell inside the interrogation rooms. And you can see the tiger chair in the cell. So they put me into the cell and ordered me to sit on the tiger chair. And that the tiger chair had a bar in, in my belly. And then they, they can close it up and then lock me um, in the chair so I cannot move. I'm afraid if I give them the passcode, if they see any message um, on WhatsApp or Telegram or something, they will use any excuse to charge me politically. For example, what I remember is, is one Taiwanese guy, uh, Li Mingzhe, Li Mingzhe, had been charged and finally sentenced for about seven years because of subversion. And He's he, just because he left a message on WeChat saying sooner or later China will have a riot. And just because of that sentence and become the evidence on court and charge him the version. So I don't want to let them see any conversation on WhatsApp or Telegram and that would be an excuse to charge me politically. And the other one, of course, is because I wanted to safeguard the sensitive conversation between me and consulate officials. So I reject. And then they see I reject to give them the passcode. They sent two secret police inside the detention rooms. And one's of my left hand side, one is on my right hand side. And one of, it, one of them grabbed the phone. My phone already had been confiscated, and then they grabbed my phone. And the other one just grabbed my hair and forced me to do facial recognition to open that phone. So I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm behind cough at that time, you know. So I'm trying to, you know, like this. I don't want to let them to do the facial recognition. And they use violence and then they asked the correctional, correctional officer to come in and order them to put my handcuff attach the bar. So that's, you know, that the tiger chair and then they were bar here and then they would lock it up. And then the bar here and your handcuff can attach to the bar and you can even move. So they ordered the correctional officer to do it. And I felt the correctional officer shown a bit hesitant to do so. What I guess is that probably there the first time these, he sees such violence happened in their facilities. So a bit shorted. But he finally followed to do so. So he just locked it on the bar. And finally they successfully opened my phone. They asked me out and then they handcuffed me shackled me on the, on the ankles and blindfolded me. And where, where enough, they asked me to put my prisoner vest inside out. 
and that is over here. Why? And what I think is that because the my prisoner that have my personal information, where I'm from, where's my prisoner number? So they wanted to cover it, wanted to hide it. So they, they put my prisoner vest inside out and hooked me. And then they dropped me onto not a police car, but a private van. And they ordered me to sleep on the rear bench. So they dropped me to a known place. You know, during the process, I even worry about my safety. Because if so, they, they don't want to let outside know my identity. How about they just throw me into the sea? During the process, I mean, just disappeared. Because, you know, if that's just a civil case, they have, they could be no record at all. They delivered me to the unknown place. I remember that's a, a very quiet room. And then I heard the sound of moving furniture. And I guess that is a uh, tools for tunes for torture. I can feel it because the whole process and the whole atmosphere is not usual right so so I, I i told them you don't torture me i can tell you whatever you want don't need to torture me but they just keep quiet so so they start to you know hand me out something like on the wooden plate something like this and you know, you ra if you raise your hands, that would be fine. But how about countless hours? They just keep hand me up for countless hours, and then I feel sore and painful. And then I've been shuffled, you know, and I I feel extremely painful. And then they didn't ask me any question. And and then they asked me to do squat and also for an other kind of hours. And then once I shuffled, they use a known weapon, sharpened weapon, to beat me. For example, I, 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 I did squat like this, and my leg would be shuffled, and then they would beat my ankles. And they would just, you know, poke me, because they are sharpened weapons. I can't see because I am been blindfolded and even hooked it. And you know, once they hooked at me, hard to breathe, almost can't breathe. So if you do extreme exercise, you feel suffocated. And, and if I just can't put up with it, and then they order me to, you know, to kneel, and then but put their hands up, also as well, and kind of hours. And you feel shuffle as well. So, at the moment if I can't suffer this, I just cried. After a few days, I, I can't even walk. I can't even walk. And that's, they have very obvious bruises and wounds in my ankles and on my legs. In order to protect their safety, I declare I dissociated. The, the, the family ties with my all, all of my family members in Manchang China and Hong Kong for their better safety. I have no communication with them anymore. So that is the things I have to do. Once I choose to speak out, that is a course, but once I decide to do it, I need to make up my mind to take whatever the, the course would be. Really wanted to say a big thank you to those protesters if because they keep voicing out for me and then they care about my safety previously. So that's one of the very critical points that the secret police are willing to let me out because they don't want to trigger more and 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 severe protests in the future. So and also that um, um, I wanted to give a big thank you for them too, because they they helped me a lot. And even after I got released, they um, have some petitions and rallies outside of the British consulate to 
uh, asking the UK government to protect me more. So, so that is a thing that is very um, grateful for them. We need to think twice, how could we get along with China in the future? That's because, for example, like we Hong Kongers has a first hand experience to 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 stand to the uh, authoritarian regimes. Now it's getting worse than them to be even totalitarian regimes. So we we clearly see when we get along with them for the business and economic benefit, then we need to sacrifice our political freedoms. So that would affect the UK soon. So you can see even the decision on Huawei, and we I I I deeply concerned about the national security, and I I, I think I would rather provide the first hand experience to see the um, the another side of the um, of China or of Chinese authorities, not only see that you know very bright side of the economic booming. Of Chinese uh, of China, but also see that how could they suppress their own people using their um, um, booming economic muscles. So, so that is the warning signal to the UK.